Okay, today what we're looking at is this 3D printed bell for the Robbie Gyro section that I had electroplated. And I had to, uh, had to guess at the color, and of course the color is not right, but I pretty much knew that was going to happen. But I wanted uh, Robbie's bell is actually turned in brass, so I picked brass. But when you buy brass spray paint, that's the kind of crap you get. So I kind of figured there was going to be a communication problem there. For example, this is brass. So it's more of a, a gold looking, but brass plumbing fitting, brass pipe, the brass piece on Robbie's head. They all would have been much closer to almost copper. If I just maybe said, give me a polished copper look. But that was one of the things I wanted to learn. That's why we're doing this to help you guys in case you ever need parts electroplated. You might want to spend more time communicating to pick the exact color that you want electroplated. Uh, or maybe, I didn't even request, but maybe they would have had small samples of their electroplated colors, which would have been the way to go if you were going to spend a lot of money to have a part made. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. For example, uh, this is what the part looks like if it's just 3D printed on an FM. i got your FDM printer sitting over here. So nothing real special there, but they're able to take that file. Initially, they're, uh, uh, they're what were they called? They're engineers, looked at the file and said, you know, this, this isn't one file. We, I don't think we can do this. And I explained to them, yes, the STL file is actually made up of... Um, well, the bell is one part. These are inserted into that one part. Then this center piece where the bearing sits and everything, let me, I have to get a screwdriver to pull that out, <coughs> is another part. So there's actually three parts. Of course, if you count those, it's each one is three. You've got one, two, three, four, five. Five parts all joined together to make the one STL file. And once I told them that and sent them a video and showed them a picture that it does in fact print and it does in fact slice they did it and obviously it turned out really nice I'm gonna turn off this motor here and this is a part that I would like to uh, see how it turn out if they uh, CNC'd it in aluminum this is 3D printed and just spray painted so here we have the bell part let's lift that off Look how nice that turned out. I mean, it, obviously no layer lines, super glossy. I didn't. I, I even told them I didn't need the inside coated, but it must be easier for them. Maybe it gets dipped or something. I don't know. Now, the only thing that I would do different, other than the color, this is the color they call brass. I think I would request copper. But uh, other than that, the only thing I would do different is where these bearings get inserted into here because this uh, coating adds thickness to the material it made it uh, made it almost impossible to get the bearings because they have to go both on the inside and the outside and basically there's a little stopper in the middle that sets how far the bearings go in when you press them in and uh, cleaning the outside ones wasn't too hard on here I had a uh, 12 millimeter drill bit which I actually just took my hand and basically just went like this and cleaned the plating off on the inside. But you can't really get into here to do it, so it was a lot more difficult and time consuming to uh, get the bearings set in on the inside part. So that, that was another learning thing that I'm sharing with you in case you ever have something like that you're having plated but has exact size holes for bearings or screws or something. You need to take the plating thickness into consideration. You'd probably have to ask them what that thickness is so you'd know how to change your thing. In my case, I would have just told them, uh, mask this off. Maybe they could have put tape here and here so that the plating doesn't even go into that part. You know what I mean? Or pack it with clay or something. I'm sure they have a way if you tell them this, that's a no-go zone, you know? But... Uh, really incredible it's it's very substantial it's not uh, wombly it's not rubbery it's very stiff which is what I wanted uh, this part fit perfectly into the uh, other part that they 3d 
printed in uh, nylon. If you've watched that video, I'll put a link to this video down below because these are nylon gears. Everything you see that's white was printed in nylon. And um, look at that, plated. If you need parts plated, they can in fact do it. Uh, it's easiest to ask them how uh, to place the order, which is what I did, because when I was just looking around the site, I didn't particularly notice the word electroplating. And in fact, I they when I told them what I was trying to do, they told me where to uh, write that in. So selected the color, selected 3D printed, and selected the word electroplating, and then an, another cal uh, color palette thing came up. But it, you know, com little teeny squares on a computer screen don't don't really tell you what you need to know. I think obviously when most people get stuff plated they're going to go with something you know like chrome or silver or nickel something that you already know what it looks like. In my case instead of this which is brass color they call it but in reality this is brass that's much closer to uh, to a copper plate which they do you know printed circuit boards and this is the copper that wouldn't look too bad. So I think I would probably try just requesting copper. I don't think I would request gold because I think that's probably more expensive and, and not necessarily the color that I'm after. But uh, this part turned out wonderful. Really wonderful. I will tell you though that this part being that it was a one-off in this size was extremely expensive. <laughs> but uh, I won't go much further than that because you can get price quotes for free for your particular job. Now if you needed more of these, the price goes down. It's just that there are a lot of steps involved when you're electroplating something. And if they have to set everything up to run just one piece through for all those steps, well then you're going to have to pay for that. But um, if you were having a bunch done at one time, you know, a dozen or something, or more, the price becomes quite reasonable, especially if you're considering comparing this to paying a um, a machinist to lathe you out a bell, and uh, with the intricacies of this particular design. Normally, when you lathe turn the bell, like I did the one on the uh, my Robbie out in the robot hut, the bell is just one piece, and these pieces here, which actually in the end would get painted black, and this would be black. Uh, and the inside part, those are other pieces that you then glue and join on and the uh, rather than this sort of drive on the Robbie when you actually have a small set screw that comes through and it tightens right in onto the uh, yeah, the drive shaft. I can't remember what size of shafts in that Robbie out there but it's a simpler design but even at that it's quite expensive to have uh, something like this turned from a block of brass you know, on a lathe machine time. So this becomes a very cost feasible way of doing something, especially if you're doing more than one. But uh, you don't see any layer lines. You don't see any defects. It's very smooth. It's very shiny. It's uh, firm. So very happy with that.